Ulan Bator, formerly anglicized as Ulan Bator, Mongolian, Ulan Bator M, Btr, Ula Gamma Anba Gamma Ator, literally, Red Hero, is the capital and largest city of Mongolia. The city is not part of any AMAG province, and its population as of 2014 was over 1.3 million, almost half of the country's total population. Located in north-central Mongolia, the municipality lies at an elevation of about 1,300 meters 4, feet in a valley on the Tul River. It is the country's cultural, industrial and financial heart, the center of Mongolia's road network and connected by rail to both the Trans-Siberian Railway in Russia and the Chinese railway system. The city was founded in 1639 as a nomadic Buddhist monastic center. It settled permanently at its present location, the junction of the Tul and Selby rivers, in 1778. Prior to that occasion it changed location 28 times, each new location being chosen ceremonially. In the 20th century, Ulaanbaatar grew into a major manufacturing center. Ulaanbaatar is a member of the Asian network of major cities 21. The city's official website lists Moscow, Hohat, Seoul, Sapporo and Denver as sister cities. Topic. Names and etymology Ulaanbaatar has been given numerous names in its history. Before 1911, the official name was Ikh Kari Mongolian, e Great Settlement, or Daa Kari, Da Rae Da, Great, or simply Kari. The Chinese equivalent, Da Kulan, Da Ku Lun was rendered into Western languages as Kulan, or Kuran. Upon independence in 1911, with both the secular government and the Bogod Khan's palace present, the city's name changed to Niazol Kari, Nizlal Re Capital Camp. It is called Bogdin Kari, Bogdan Rae Bogdin Kari, Great Holy Khan's Monastery, in the folk song, Praise of Bogdin Kari. In Western languages, the city at that time was most often referred to as Urga from Mongolian, Arj Orgu, Palace. When the city became the capital of the new Mongolian People's Republic in 1924, its name was changed to Ulaanbaatar, 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 classical Mongolian Uliganbagator, literally, Red Hero. On the session of the first Great People's Kuraldan of Mongolia in 1924, a majority of delegates expressed their wish to change the capital city's name to Badr Khat, Hero City. However, under pressure from Tura Riskalov, a Soviet activist of the Communist International, the city was named Ulaanbaatar Khat, City of Red Hero. In Europe and North America, Ulaanbaatar continued to be generally known as Urga or Kur until 1924, and afterward as Ulaanbaatar, a spelling derived from Ulaanbaatar, Ulaanbaatar. The Russian spelling, Ulaanbaatar, is the Russian phonetic equivalent of the Mongolian name, according to Russian spelling conventions. This form was defined two decades before the Mongolian name got its current Cyrillic script spelling and Ulaanbaatar transliteration 1941 to 1950. However, the name of the city was spelled Ulaanbaatar Koto during the decade in which Mongolia used the Latin alphabet. Today, English speakers sometimes refer to the city as UB. Topic: History Topic. Prehistory Human habitation at the site of Ulaanbaatar dates from the Lower Paleolithic, with a number of sites on Bogod Khan, Bayant Yukha and Sanjinoherhan Mountains, revealing tools which date from 300,000 years ago to 40,000 to 12,000 years ago. These Upper Paleolithic people hunted mammoth and woolly rhinoceros, the bones of which are found abundantly around Ulaanbaatar. Topic. Before 1639 A number of Xiongnu era royal tombs have been discovered around Ulaanbaatar, including the tombs of Belk Gorge near Dambadarjalan Monastery and tombs of Sanjinoherhan. Located on the banks of the Tul River, Ulaanbaatar has been well within the sphere of Turko Mongol nomadic empires throughout history. Wang Khan, Togrul of the Karaites, a Nestorian Christian monarch whom Marco Polo identified as the legendary Prester John, is said to have had his palace here the Black Forest of the Tul River and forbade hunting in the holy mountain Bogod Uul. 
The palace is said to be where Genghis Khan stayed with Yesue Khotun before attacking the Tangut in 1226. Topic: <laughs> Mobile Monastery. Founded in 1639 as a yurt monastery, Ulaanbaatar, originally Orgu, palace yurt, was first located at Lake Sharit Sagan Nur, 75 kilometers, 47 miles, directly east of the imperial capital Karakoram, in what is now Bird Sum, Ovorkongai, around 230 kilometers, 143 miles, southwest from the present site of Ulaanbaatar, and was intended by the Mongol nobles to be the seat of Zanabazar, the first Jetsundumba Katutu. Zanabazar returned to Mongolia from Tibet in 1651, and founded seven amags monastic departments in Urga, later establishing four more. As a mobile monastery town, it was often moved to various places along the Selenge, or Khon and Tul rivers, as supply and other needs would demand. During the Dzungar Wars of the late 17th century, it was even moved to Inner Mongolia. As the city grew, it moved less and less. The movements of the city can be detailed as follows: Sharit Sagan Nur, 1639; Koshu Sidem, 1640; Kenti Mountains, 1654; Ogumor, 1688; Inner Mongolia, 1690; Cisarlegin Erdin Tolgoi, 1700; Dagandel, 1719; Usan Seer, 1720; Ikh Tamir, 1722; Jargalant, 1723; Even Gol, 1724. Kujirbulan 1729, Bergaltai 1730, Sanogor 1732, Terrell 1733, Uliastai River 1734, Kui Mandal 1736, Hunsel 1740, Udleg 1742, Ogumor 1743, Selby 1747, Uliastai River 1756, Selby 1762, Kui Mandal 1772 and Selby 1778 in 1878, the city moved from Kui Mandal and settled for good at its current location, near the confluence of the Selby and Tul rivers, and beneath Bogad Khan Uul, at that time also on the caravan route from Beijing to Kayakta. One of the earliest western mentions of Urga is the account of the Scottish traveller John Bell in 1721. What they call the Urga is the court, or the place where the prince Tashit Khan and high priest Bogad Jetsundumba Kutugtu reside, who are always encamped at no great distance from one another. They have several thousand tents about them, which are removed from time to time. The Urga is much frequented by merchants from China and Russia, and other places. By Zanabazar's death in 1723, Urga was the Mongolia's preeminent monastery in terms of religious authority. A council of seven of the highest-ranking lamas Kamba Noman Khan, Dead Kamba and Five Surge made most of the city's religious decisions. It had also become Outer Mongolia's commercial center. From 1733 to 1778, Urga moved in the vicinity of its present location. In 1754, the Erdan Shanzadba Yam Karat of Urga was given authority to supervise the administrative affairs of the Bogad subjects. It also served as the city's chief judicial court. In 1758, the Qianlong Emperor appointed the Khalkha Vice General Sanzadorj as the first Mongol Amban of Urga with full authority to oversee the Kuri and administer well all the Kutugtu subjects." In 1761, a second Amban was appointed for the same purpose, a Manchu one. A quarter century later, in 1786, a decree issued in Peking gave right to the Urga Ambans to decide the administrative affairs of Tashit Khan and Setsun Khan territories. With this, Urga became the highest civil authority in the country. Based on Urga's Mongol governor Sanzadorje's petition, the Qianlong Emperor officially recognized an annual ceremony on Bogad Khan Mountain in 1778 and provided the annual imperial donations. The city was the seat of the Jetsundumba Kutugtus, two Qing Ambans, and a Chinese trade town grew. Four trees, or 4.24 kilometers (2.63 miles) east of the city center at the confluence of the Uliastai and Tul rivers. By 1778, Urga may have had as many as 10,000 monks, who were regulated by a monastic rule, internal rule of the Grand Monastery or Yeke Kurian U Dotoadu Durham. For example, in 1797 a decree of the Fourth Jetsundumba forbade, "...singing, playing with archery, myagman, chess, usury and smoking." 
Executions were forbidden where the holy temples of the Bogod Jetsandama could be seen, so capital punishment took place away from the city. In 1839, the fifth Bogod Jetsundamba moved his residence to Ganden Hill, an elevated position to the west of the Barun Damnarchan markets. Part of the city was moved to nearby Tolgoit. In 1855, the part of the camp that moved to Tolgoit was brought back to its 1778 location, and the seventh Bogod Jetsundamba returned to the Zun Kuri. The Ganden Monastery flourished as a center of philosophical studies. <inaudible> Urga and the Kayakta trade Following the Treaty of Kayakta in 1727, Urga was a major point of the Kayakta trade between Russia and China, mostly Siberian furs for Chinese cloth and later tea. The route ran south to Urga, southeast across the Gobi Desert to Kalgan, and southeast over the mountains to Peking. Urga was also a collection point for goods coming from further west. These were either sent to China or shipped north to Russia via Kayakta. Because of legal restrictions and the lack of good trade routes to the west, by 1908, there was a Russian quarter with a few hundred merchants and a Russian club and informal Russian mayor. East of the main town was the Russian consulate built in 1863 with an Orthodox church, post office and 20 Cossack guards. It was fortified in 1900 and briefly occupied by troops during the Boxer Rebellion. There was a telegraph line north to Kayakta and southeast to Kalgan and weekly postal service along these routes. Beyond the Russian consulate was the Chinese trading post called Maimaichung, and nearby the palace of the Manchu Viceroy. With the growth of Western trade at the Chinese ports the tea trade to Russia declined, some Chinese merchants left and wool became the main export. Manufactured goods still came from Russia, but most were now brought from Kalgan by caravan. The annual trade was estimated at 25 million rubles, nine-tenths in Chinese hands and one-tenth in Russian. Independence and Socialist Era The Moscow trade expedition of the 1910s estimated the population of Urga at 60,000. Based on Nikolai Shavalsky's study in the 1870s, the city's population swelled during the Nadam festival and major religious festivals to more than 100,000. In 1919, the number of monks had reached 20,000, up from 13,000 in 1810. In 1910, the Amban Sando went to quell a major fight between Ganden Lamas and Chinese traders started by an incident at the Da Yi Yu shop in the Barun Damnarchan market district. He was unable to bring the Lamas under control, and was forced to flee back to his quarters. In 1911, with the Qing dynasty in China headed for total collapse, Mongolian leaders in Ikh Kuri for Nadam met in secret on Mount Bogod Khan Uul and resolved to end 220 years of Manchu control of their country. On 29 December 1911, the 8th Jepsundamba Katutu was declared ruler of an independent Mongolia and assumed the title Bogod Khan. Kuri as the seat of the Jetsundamba Kutugtu was the logical choice for the capital of the new state. However, in the tripartite Kayakta Agreement of 1915 between Russia, China, and Mongolia, Mongolia's status was changed to mere autonomy. In 1919, Mongolian nobles, over the opposition of the Bogod Khan, agreed with the Chinese resident Chen Yi on a settlement of the Mongolian question along Qing era lines, but before this settlement could be put into effect, Korea was occupied by the troops of Chinese warlord Xu Shuzheng, who forced the Mongolian nobles and clergy to renounce autonomy completely. The city changed hands twice in 1921. Firstly, on 4 February, a mixed Russian-Mongolian force led by white Russian warlord Roman von Ungern Sternberg captured the city, freeing the Bogod Khan from Chinese imprisonment and killing a part of the Chinese garrison. Baron Ungern's capture of Urga was followed by clearing out Mongolia's small gangs of demoralized Chinese soldiers and, at the same time, looting and murder of foreigners, including a vicious pogrom that killed off the Jewish community. On the 22nd of February 1921, the Bogod Khan was once again elevated the Great Khan of Mongolia in Urga. However, at the same time that Baron Ungern was taking control of Urga, a Soviet-supported communist Mongolian force led by Damdin Sukhbadar was forming in Russia, and in March they crossed the border. Ungern and his men rode out in May to meet Red Russian and Red Mongolian troops, but suffered a disastrous defeat in June. In July 1921, the communist Soviet Mongolian army became the second conquering force in six months to enter Urga. Mongolia came to the control of the Soviet Russia. 
On the 29th of October 1924, the town was renamed Ulaanbaatar, Mongolian Red Hero, by the advice of T.R. Riskalov, the Soviet representative in Mongolia. During the socialist period, especially following the Second World War, most of the old GER districts were replaced by Soviet-style blocks of flats, often financed by the Soviet Union. Urban planning began in the 1950s, and most of the city today is the result of construction between 1960 and 1985. The Trans Mongolian Railway, connecting Ulaanbaatar with Moscow and Beijing, was completed in 1956, and cinemas, theaters, museums, etc. were erected. On the other hand, most of the temples and monasteries of pre socialist Korea were destroyed following the anti religious purges of the late 1930s. The Ganden Monastery was reopened in 1944 when the U.S. Vice President Henry Wallace asked to see a monastery during his visit to Mongolia. Democratic protests of 1989–1990 Ulaanbaatar was the site of demonstrations that led to Mongolia's transition to democracy and market economy in 1990. On 10 December 1989, protesters outside the Youth Culture Center called for Mongolia to implement perestroika and glasnost in their full sense. Dissident leaders demanded free elections and economic reform. On 14 January 1990, the protesters, having grown from 200 to over 1,000, met at the Lenin Museum in Ulaanbaatar. A demonstration in Sukhbatar Square on 21 January followed. Afterwards, weekend demonstrations in January and February were held accompanied by the forming of Mongolia's first opposition parties. On 7 March, ten dissidents assembled in Sukhbatar Square and went on a hunger strike. Thousands of supporters joined them. More arrived the following day and the crowd grew more unruly. Seventy-one people were injured, one fatally. On 9 March, the Communist Mongolian People's Revolutionary Party MPRP government resigned. The provisional government announced Mongolia's first free elections, which were held in July. The MPRP won the election and resumed power. Topic: <laughs> Since 1990. Since Mongolia's transition to a market economy in 1990, the city has experienced further growth especially in the GER districts, as construction of new blocks of flats had basically slowed to a halt in the 1990s. The population has more than doubled to over 1 million inhabitants. This causes a number of social, environmental, and transportation problems. In recent years, construction of new buildings has gained new momentum, especially in the city center, and apartment prices have skyrocketed. In 2008, Ulaanbaatar was the scene of riots after the Mongolian Democratic, Civic Will Party and Republican parties disputed the Mongolian People's Revolutionary Party's victory in the parliamentary elections. A four-day state of emergency was declared, the capital was placed under a 2200 to 8 o'clock curfew, and alcohol sales banned. Following these measures, rioting did not resume. This was the first deadly riot in modern Ulaanbaatar's history. In April 2013, Ulaanbaatar hosted the 7th Ministerial Conference of the Community of Democracies, and has also lent its name to the Ulaanbaatar Dialogue on Northeast Asian Security. Since 7 July 2016, the mayor of Ulaanbaatar and governor of the capital city has been Sukhbataran Batbold Mongolian People's Party. <laughs> Geography and climate Ulaanbaatar is located at about 1,350 meters (4,430 feet) above mean sea level, slightly east of the center of Mongolia on the Tul River, a sub-tributary of the Selenge, in a valley at the foot of the mountain Bogad Khan Uul. Bogad Khan Uul is a broad, heavily forested mountain rising 2,250 meters (7,380 feet) to the south of Ulaanbaatar. It forms the boundary between the steppe zone to the south and the forest steppe zone to the north. It is also one of the oldest reserves in the world, being protected by law since the 18th century. The forests of the mountains surrounding Ulaanbaatar are composed of evergreen pines, deciduous larches and birches, while the riverine forest of the Tul River is composed of broad-leaved, deciduous poplars, elms and willows. 
As a point of reference, Ulaanbaatar lies on roughly the same latitude as Vienna, Munich, Orléans, and Seattle. It lies on roughly the same longitude as Chongqing, Hanoi and Jakarta, owing to its high elevation, its relatively high latitude, its location hundreds of kilometers from any coast, and the effects of the Siberian anticyclone. Ulaanbaatar is the coldest national capital in the world, with a monsoon-influenced, cold semi-arid climate Copen BSK, USDA plant hardiness zone 3B that closely borders a subarctic climate DWC and warm summer humid continental DWB. The city features brief, warm summers and long, bitterly cold and dry winters. The coldest January temperatures, usually at the time just before sunrise, are between minus 36 and minus 40 degrees Celsius minus 32.8 and minus 40.0 degrees Fahrenheit with no wind, due to temperature inversion. Most of the annual precipitation of 267 mm in falls from June to September. The highest recorded precipitation in the city was 659 mm or 25.94 inches at the Kareltogut Astronomical Observatory on Mount Bogod Khan Uul. Ulaanbaatar has an average annual temperature of minus 0.4 degrees Celsius or 31.3 degrees Fahrenheit, making it the coldest capital in the world as cold as Nuuk, Greenland, but Greenland is not independent. The city lies in the zone of discontinuous permafrost, which means that building is difficult in sheltered aspects that preclude thawing in the summer, but easier on more exposed ones where soils fully thaw. Suburban residents live in traditional yurts that do not protrude into the soil. Extreme temperatures in the city range from minus 42.2 degrees Celsius minus 44.0 degrees Fahrenheit in January and February 1957 to 39.0 degrees Celsius 102.2 degrees Fahrenheit in July 1988. Topic: <inaudible> Panoramas. <inaudible> <inaudible> Administration and subdivisions Ulaanbaatar is divided into nine districts Duregs, Baganer, Bagahongai, Bayangal, Bayanjurk, Chingalte, Khan Uul, Nalaik, Sanjino Kerhan and Sukhbatar. Each district is subdivided into korus, of which there are 121. The capital is governed by a city council the citizens representatives hurl with 40 members, elected every four years. The city council appoints the mayor. When his predecessor became prime minister in January 2006, former city manager Gombosoran Monkbayer was elected mayor. Ulaanbaatar is governed as an independent first-level region, separate from the surrounding Tav Amag. The city consists of a central district built in Soviet 1940s and 1950s style architecture, surrounded by and mingled with residential concrete tower blocks and large GER districts. In recent years, many of the tower blocks' ground floors have been modified and upgraded to small shops, and many new buildings have been erected some illegally, as some private companies erect buildings without legal licenses, permits in forbidden places. Economy <inaudible> 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 As the main industrial center of Mongolia, Ulaanbaatar produces a variety of consumer goods and is responsible for about two-thirds of Mongolia's total gross domestic product GDP. .The transition to a market economy in 1990, which has led to a shift towards service industries making up 43% of the city's GDP, along with rapid urbanization and population growth has so far correlated with an increase in GDP. Mining makes up the second largest contributor to Ulaanbaatar's GDP at 25 North of the city are several gold mines, including the Boru Gold Mine, and foreign investment in the sector has allowed for growth and development. However, in light of a noticeable drop in GDP during the financial crisis of 2008, as demand for mining exports dropped, there has been movement towards diversifying the economy. Sites 
Mainstream tourist guide books usually recommend the Gandante Chinlin Monastery with the large Janraisig statue, the socialist monument complex at Zazen Memorial with its great view over the city, the Winter Palace of the Bogod Khan, Chinggis Square and the nearby Kwaijin Lama Temple. The city also houses numerous museums, two of the prominent ones being the National Museum of Mongolia and the Zanabazar Fine Arts Museum. Popular destinations for day trips are the Gorkai Terel National Park, the Manzushir Monastery ruins on the southern flank of Bogod Khan Uul and Genghis Khan Equestrian Statue. Important shopping districts include the 3rd Microdistrict Boulevard simply called Korulal or the District, Peace Avenue around the State Department Store simply called Ikh Delgar or Great Store, and the Narantul Black Market area simply called Zak or the Market. Ulan Bator presently has three large cinemas, one modern ski resort, two large indoor stadiums, several large department stores and one large amusement park. Food, entertainment and recreation venues are steadily increasing in variety. KFC, Round Table Pizza, Cinnabon, Louis Vuitton, Ramada and Kempinski have opened branches in key locations. A 309-meter-tall tower called the Morin Kerr Tower, Horsehead Fiddle Tower is planned to be built next to the central stadium. It is scheduled to finish in 2018, and the 41-floor mock tower being built by South Korean Lot Construction and Engineering. Monasteries <inaudible> 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 Among the notable older monasteries is the Kwaijin Lama Monastery, a Buddhist monastery that was completed in 1908. It escaped the destruction of Mongolian monasteries when it was turned into a museum in 1942. Another is the Ganden Monastery, which dates to the 19th century. Its most famous attraction is a 26.5 meter high golden statue of Migjid Janraisig. These monasteries are among the very few in Mongolia to escape the wholesale destruction of Mongolian monasteries under Korlugin Chibalsan. <laughs> Winter Palace Old Ikh Kuri, once the city was set up as a permanent capital, had a number of palaces and noble residences in an area called Ongin Sergin Nutag. The Jetsundumba Katutu, who was later crowned Bogod Khan, had four main imperial residences, which were located between the middle Dun Gol and Tul rivers. The summer palace was called Erdmin Dali Bayan Chulgan Sum or Bogod Khani Sarun Ord. Other palaces were the White Palace Sagan Sum or G. N. G. A. A. De Jidlan, and the Pandalan Palace also called Naro Kha Chad Sum, which was situated in the left bank of Tul River. Some of the palaces were also used for religious purposes. The only palace that remains is the Winter Palace, the Winter Palace of the Bogod Khan, Bogod Khani Nogun Sum or Bogod Khani Alan Orden, remains as a museum of the last monarch. The complex includes six temples. Many of the Bogod Khan's and his wife's possessions are on display in the main building. Topic: <laughs> Museums. <laughs> Ulan Bator has several museums dedicated to Mongolian history and culture. The Natural History Museum features many dinosaur fossils and meteorites found in Mongolia. The National Museum of Mongolia includes exhibits from prehistoric times through the Mongol Empire to the present. The Zanabazar Museum of Fine Arts has a large collection of Mongolian art, including works of the 17th century sculptor, artist Zanabazar, as well as Mongolia's most famous painting, One Day in Mongolia by Baldugin. Marzin. Sharov. The Mongolian Theatre Museum presents the history of the performing arts in Mongolia. The city's former Lenin Museum announced plans in January 2013 to convert to a museum showcasing dinosaur and other prehistoric fossils. Pre-1778 artifacts that never left the city since its founding include the Vajradhara statue made by Zanabazar himself in 1683, the city's main deity kept at the Vajradhara temple, an ornate throne presented to Zanabazar by the Kangxi Emperor before 1723, a sandalwood hat presented to Zanabazar by the Dalai Lama c. 16. 63, Zanabazar's large fur coat which was also presented by the Kangxi Emperor and a great number of original statues made by Zanabazar e.g., the Green Terra. 
The Military Museum of Mongolia's collection consists of two permanent exhibition halls, showcasing the war history of the country from prehistoric times to the modern era. In the first hall, one can see various tools and weapons from Paleolithic age to the times of Manchu Empire. The Modern History Exhibition Hall showcases the history of the Mongolian military, starting with the Bogod Khan period (1911–24) up until Mongolia's recent military involvement in peacekeeping operations. Although the building's condition is dire, the Victims of Political Persecution Memorial Museum tells about one of the most tragic history of Mongolia's 20th century. It is dedicated to those fallen under the political purge that took the lives of over 32,000 statesmen, herders, scholars, politicians and lamas. The city's museum offers a view of Ulaanbaatar's history through old maps and photos. The most interesting item is a huge painting of the capital as it looked in 1912 that shows major landmarks such as Ganden Monastery and the Winter Palace of the Bogod Khan. Part of the museum is dedicated to special photo exhibits that change frequently. Mongolian Railway History Museum is an open-air museum that displays six types of locomotives used during a 65-year period of Mongolian Railway's history. The Puzzle Toys Museum displays a comprehensive collection of complex wooden toys players can assemble. <laughs> Chinggis Square Chinggis Square, in the government district, is the center of Ulaanbaatar. The square is 31,068 square meters 334,413 square feet in size. In the middle of Sukhbadar Square, there is a statue of Damdan Sukhbadar on horseback. The spot was chosen because that was where Sukhbadar's horse had urinated considered a good omen on 8 July 1921 during a gathering of the Red Army. On the north side of Sukhbadar Square is the Mongolian Parliament Building, featuring a large statue of Chinggis Khan at the top of the front steps. Peace Avenue the main thoroughfare through town, runs along the south side of the square. Zazen Memorial The Zazen Memorial, a memorial to Soviet soldiers killed in World War II, sits on a hill south of the city. The Zazen Memorial includes a Soviet tank paid for by the Mongolian people and a circular memorial painting which in the socialist realism style depicts scenes of friendship between the peoples of the Soviet Union and Mongolia. Visitors who make the long climb to the top are rewarded with a panoramic view of the whole city down in the valley. National Sports Stadium National Sports Stadium is the main sporting venue. The Nadam Festival is held here every July. Arts and culture Ulaanbaatar features a mix of traditional and western-style theaters, offering world-class performances. Many of the traditional folklore bands play regularly around the world including in New York, London and Tokyo. The Ulaanbaatar Opera House, situated in the center of the city, hosts concerts and musical performances, as well as opera and ballet performances, some of them are in collaboration with world ballet houses such as Boston Theatre. The Mongolian State Grand National Orchestra was originally established during Kublai Khan, re-established in 1945. It has the largest orchestra of traditional instruments in the country with a repertoire going beyond national music, encompassing dozens of international musical pieces. The Tuman EKH Ensemble comprises artists who perform all types of Mongolian song, music, and dance. They play traditional instruments including the Moran Kur horse head fiddle and perform Mongolian long song, epic and eulogy songs, a ritualistic shaman ritual dance, an ancient palace dance and a psalm mask dance. The Moran Kur Ensemble of Mongolia is part of the Mongolian State Philharmonic located at the Chinggis Khan Square. It is a popular ensemble featuring the national string instrument Moran Kur and performs various domestic and international works. Parks A number of nationally known parks and protected areas belong officially to the city. 
Gorkai Terrell National Park, a nature preserve with many tourist facilities, is approximately 70 kilometers (43 miles) from Ulaanbaatar. It is accessible via paved road. The 40 meter high (130 foot) Genghis Khan equestrian statue, 54 kilometers (34 miles) from Ulaanbaatar, is the largest equestrian statue in the world. Bogad Khan Mountain is a strictly protected area with a length of 31 kilometers (19 miles) and width of 3 kilometers (1.9 miles), covering an area of 67,300 hectares (166,302 acres). Nature conservation dates back to the 12th and 13th century when the Toral Khan of Mongolian ancient Karaiti Amag, who prohibited logging and hunting activities, claimed the Bogad Khan as a holy mountain. National Culture and Recreation Center Children's Park is an amusement park located in the downtown section, south of Shangri-La Hotel. It is also a popular place for youngsters to hang out. This small amusement park features rides, games and paddle boats. Its artificial lake castle was built in 1969, when the National Amusement Park was established in the center of the Mongolian capital Ulaanbaatar. The National Park of Mongolia opened its doors in the southeastern outskirts of the city in 2009, becoming a popular summer park for the UB goers. It has a total area of 55 hectares with over 100 k trees planted. The park is geared towards becoming educational center for healthy responsible living as well as environmental education. Topic: Embassies and consulates. Among the countries that have diplomatic facilities in Ulaanbaatar are Australia, Austria, Bulgaria, Canada, China, Cuba, Czech Republic, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Hungary, India, Italy, Japan, Kazakhstan, Laos, Malaysia, Republic of China, Taiwan, Russia, Slovakia, South Korea, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, Turkey, Ukraine, UK, USA, and Vietnam. Religion Ulaanbaatar's main religion is Buddhism. The city is also the see of the Roman Catholic missionary circonscription for all outer Mongolia. The Apostolic See is the Saints Peter and Paul Cathedral, consecrated in 2003 by Crescenzio Cardinal Siep. Municipal symbols The official symbol of Ulaanbaatar is the Garuda, a mythical bird in both Buddhist and Hindu scriptures called Khan Garuda or Kangard Mongolian, Hangard by Mongols. City emblem and flag The Garuda appears on Ulaanbaatar's emblem. In its right hand is a key, a symbol of prosperity and openness, and in its left is a lotus flower, a symbol of peace, equality and purity. In its talons it is holding a snake, a symbol of evil of which it is intolerant. On the Garuda's forehead is the Soyambo symbol, which is featured on the flag of Mongolia. The city's flag is sky blue with the Garuda arms in the center. Education. <inaudible> <inaudible> Ulaanbaatar has six major universities National University of Mongolia Mongolian University of Science and Technology Mongolian State University of Agriculture Mongolian National University of Medical Sciences Mongolian State University of Education Mongolian University of Art and Culture There are a number of other universities in the city, including Mongolian National University, Humanities University, Institute of Finance and Economics and Raffles International Institute. The National Library of Mongolia has a wide selection of English language texts on Mongolian subjects. The American School of Ulaanbaatar and the International School of Ulaanbaatar both offer Western style K 12 education in English for Mongolian nationals and foreign residents. There are many public elementary, middle and high schools. In Mongolia, 1 to 4 th grade is elementary, 5 to 8 th is middle and 9 11 is high school. Additionally, there are many private schools that offer bilingual programs. Topic: Libraries.
Topic: <laughs> National Library. The National Library of Mongolia is located in Ulan Bator and includes an extensive historical collection, items in non-Mongolian languages and a special children's collection. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Public Libraries. The Metropolitan Central Library of Ulaanbaatar, sometimes also referred to as the Ulaanbaatar Public Library, is a public library with a collection of about 500,000 items. It has an impressive 232,097 annual users and a total of 497,298 loans per year. It does charge users a registration fee of 3,800 to 4,250 tugrik, or about three United States dollars and 29 cents to 3.68. The fees may be the result of operating on a budget under $176,000 per year. They also host websites on classical and modern Mongolian literature and food, in addition to providing free Internet access. In 1986, the Ulaanbaatar government created a centralized system for all public libraries in the city, known as the Metropolitan Library System of Ulaanbaatar. This system coordinates management, acquisitions, finances, and policy among public libraries in the capital, in addition to providing support to school and children's libraries. Other than the Metropolitan Central Library, the MLSU has four branch libraries. They are in the Chingalte District, established in 1946, in the Han Uul District, established in 1948, in the Bayanjerk District, established in 1968, and in the Sanjino Herhan District, established in 1991. There is also a Children's Central Library, which was established in 1979. Topic: University Libraries. Library of Mongolian State University of Education. Library of the Academy of Management. Library of the National University of Mongolia. Institutes of the Academy of Sciences, three department libraries. Library of the Institute of Language and Literature. Library of the Institute of History. Library of the Institute of Finance and Economics Library of the National University of Mongolia Library of the Agriculture University Topic Digital Libraries The International Children's Digital Library ICDL is an organization that publishes numerous children's books in different languages on the web in child-friendly formats in 2006 they began service in Mongolia and have made efforts to provide access to the library in rural areas. The ICDL effort in Mongolia is part of a larger project funded by the World Bank and administered by the Mongolian Ministry of Education, Culture and Science, called the Rural Education and Development Project Read. .Since Mongolia lacks a publishing industry, and few children's books, the idea has been to spur the publishing industry to create 200 new children's books for classroom libraries in grades 1 to 5. After these books were published and distributed to teachers they were also published online with the rest of the ICDL collection. While a significant portion of this project is supported by outside sources, an important component is to include training of Mongolian staff to make it continue in an effective way. The project is designed to show Mongolia's youth that they can take part in the larger digital culture. The Press Institute in Ulaanbaatar oversees the digital archive of Mongolian newspapers. It is a collection of 45 newspaper titles with a particular focus on the years after the fall of communism in Mongolia. The project was supported by the British Library's Endangered Archives Program. The Metropolitan Central Library in Ulaanbaatar maintains a digital monthly news archive. Topic. Special libraries An important resource for academics is the American Center for Mongolian Studies ACMS, also based in Ulaanbaatar. Its goal is to facilitate research between Mongolia and the rest of the world and to foster academic partnerships. To help achieve this end, it operates a research library with a reading room and computers for Internet access. ACMS has 1,500 volumes related to Mongolia in numerous languages that may be borrowed with a deposit. 
It also hosts an online library that includes special reference resources and access to digital databases, including a digital book collection. There is a speaking library at school number 116 for the visually impaired, funded by the Zorig Foundation, and the collection is largely based on materials donated by Mongolian National Radio. A sizable collection of literature, know-how topics, training materials, music, plays, science broadcasts are now available to the visually impaired at the school. The Mongolia Japan Center for Human Resources Development maintains a library in Ulaanbaatar consisting of about 7,800 items. The materials in the collection have a strong focus on both aiding Mongolians studying Japanese and books in Japanese about Mongolia. It includes a number of periodicals, textbooks, dictionaries and audiovisual materials. Access to the collection does require payment of a 500 Tugrig fee, though materials are available for loan. They also provide audiovisual equipment for collection use and internet access for an hourly fee. There is an information retrieval reference service for questions that cannot be answered by their collection. Topic. Archives There is a manuscript collection at the Danzan Rabja Museum of theological, poetic, medicinal, astrological and theatrical works. It consists of literature written and collected by the monk Danzan Rabja, who is famous for his poetry. The British Library's Endangered Archives program funded a project to take digital images of unique literature in the collection, however, it is not clear where the images are stored today. Transport Ulaanbaatar is served by the Chinggis Khan International Airport formerly Bayant Yuka Airport. It is 18 kilometers 11 miles southwest of the city. Currently, the Chinggis Khan Airport is the only airport in Mongolia that offers international flights. In order to serve increased projected passenger numbers, the new Ulaanbaatar International Airport Nubia is being constructed south of the city with plans to replace the Chinggis Khan Airport. Flights to Ulaanbaatar are available from Moscow, Paris, Frankfurt, Berlin, Tokyo, Seoul, Ulan Ude, Irkutsk, Hong Kong, Beijing, Bishkek, and Istanbul. There are rail connections to the Trans Siberian Railway via Nashki and to the Chinese railway system via Jining. Ulaanbaatar is connected by road to most of the major towns in Mongolia, but most roads in Mongolia are unpaved and unmarked, and road travel can be difficult. Even within the city, not all roads are paved and some of the ones that are paved are not in good condition. Existing plans to improve transportation include a subway system, several major road projects such as a 1,000 km long 620 mile highway to link Ulaanbaatar to the regions of Altanbulag and Zaman Uud, plans to upgrade existing regional airports and roadways, and Mongolian railway projects that will connect cities and mines. The national and municipal governments regulate a wide system of private transit providers which operate numerous bus lines around the city. There is also an Ulaanbaatar trolleybus system. A secondary transit system of privately owned microbuses passenger vans operates alongside these bus lines. Additionally, Ulaanbaatar has over 4,000 taxis. The capital has 418.2 kilometers, 259.9 miles of road, of which 76.5 are paved. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Air pollution. Air pollution is a serious problem in Ulaanbaatar, especially in winter. Concentrations of certain types of particulate matter PM10 regularly exceed WHO recommended maximum levels by more than a dozen times. They also exceed the concentrations measured in northern Chinese industrial cities. During the winter months, smoke regularly obscures vision and can even lead to problems with air traffic at the local airport. Sources of the pollution are mainly the simple stoves used for heating and cooking in the city's GER districts, but also the local coal-fueled power plants. The problem is compounded by Ulaanbaatar's location in a valley between relatively high mountains, which shield the city from the winter winds and thus obstruct air circulation. <laughs> Twin towns, sister cities Ulaanbaatar is twinned with 
Proximity to nearby urban centers abroad Ulaanbaatar has close ties to cities like Seoul 1995 kilometers or 1240 miles from UB, Hong Kong 2900 kilometers or 1800 miles from UB, Tokyo 3010 kilometers or 1870 miles from UB and Moscow 4650 kilometers or 2890 miles from UB. The Zaman Uud Aranhat and Altanbulag Kayakta borders are the only places where sustained interaction occurs between Mongolia and its neighbors. Other ports are much smaller. For now Ulaanbaatar remains the main, and almost only, point of contact between Mongolia and its neighbors. Beijing remains the closest global city to Ulaanbaatar. The UB Peking Corridor is served by busy air, rail and road links. Notable individuals Asashoryu Akinori Haku Hosho Munganzazal Janshindulam Sanjashurangin Zorig Nambaran Enkbayar Harumafuji Kohei Appearances in fiction In the novel Alas, Babylon by Pat Frank, the city was a relocation site for the Soviet leadership. In the novel it had a medium-wave station for communications. See also Architecture of Mongolia List of historical cities and towns of Mongolia Peace Bridge Mongolia.